I'm just one of thousands of adopted adults who have been raising their voices about their experiences of abuse and trauma. Not only do we suffer the trauma of losing our parents, families, and identities during the adoption process, many of us suffer further trauma from abuse after we are adopted. However, adoption trauma is virtually unknown and not assessed by the medical or mental health fields. Today, I want to bring your attention to the cycle of generational trauma. While more prospective adoptive parents are attending classes and reading books on adoption, there is no requirement for them to engage in mental health therapy. This oversight has led to generational trauma that was passed from parent to child. Here is an excerpt from Eric Lax's book, Start to Finish, Woody Allen and the Art of Movie Making. Moses Farah was born in Korea in 1978, afflicted with cerebral palsy. He was abandoned in a telephone booth, taken to an orphanage, and adopted by Farrow when he was two. In 1985, she adopted Dillman. In 1991, Woody became Moses' adoptive parent as well. Now, a 39-year-old family therapist, Moses speaks of the atmosphere his mother created in the home as one in which I felt the constant need to gain her trust and approval. In his earliest memories, I, woke, I was awoken in the middle of the night by Mia. I was in kindergarten. I slept in the girls' room with my adoptive sisters, Lark and Daisy, on the lower bed of the bunk. Mia pulled me out of it. I was still half asleep as I was still half asleep as she repeatedly asked in a harsh tone if I had taken her pills. It wasn't out of concern that I had swallowed any, but rather to accuse me of having stolen them from her. She took me to her bathroom. I was crying as she stood over me, scowling. I told her a dozen or so more times that I hadn't taken them. But finally, I said what she wanted to hear. I was forced to lie. Simply telling her that I took them didn't suffice, however, and more questions ensued. I had to elaborate on the lie and tell her I had taken four or five pills because I thought they were Tic Tacs. She pulled me over to the sink and directed me to put her bar of soap in my mouth and then instructed me to wash out my mouth, telling me that lying is a bad thing to do. Once I dried my mouth, she put me back to bed. The next day, I searched for the missing pills and found them under the cabinet between the toilet and the bathtub but I never mentioned this to her out of fear of getting into more trouble. This was the first time I felt truly fearful of her. And it was the start of her instilling fear in me. It began the very long and impossible task of gaining her approval. I can recall numerous times when she let me know the burden was on me to gain her trust. After living with this experience from my childhood for over 35 years, I asked for healing the wounded child in me. I did not ask to be adopted. I did not deserve to suffer this abuse or to live in such fear at such a young age. 
I have suffered, but suffering is not living. Unlike my siblings, Tom, Thaddeus, and Lark, I'm still here and very much want my trauma healed so I can live and thrive. To know what it means to deserve to be who I really am. This is still, there is still a chance to give this to me, to relieve me of this burden of not only suffering my trauma, but yours as well. Mom, have I not suffered enough? <laughs>